you've got another comment, then okay. you go for yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. That's yeah. that's fine. Uh, <laughs> this is actually one that I did in the, one of the last comments corner. I, I'm not sure what this person meant, but he just. This is from Tank Lank Lank and Lankin Tank. Hello, Tank Lankin. This is a month ago, and he just writes balls. And I didn't know what to, to reply except uh, they're doing fine. Thank you very much. I just moved on to the next comment, but uh, I'm not sure uh, if that meant I had the guts to do it or or what. He just wrote balls, but there you go. Uh, <laughs> it's funny you should say that. Somebody left a similar comment somewhere around on one of my videos, and it was just like capital letters and just one word. Okay. Um, um, and then there's another one. Delator forty two thousand. Not this again. I didn't know how to reply, so I just left it. Meaning, not this again. It doesn't sound like he liked what he saw. But oh well. Delator forty two thousand. I mean, if you would like to expand on that, you're more than welcome to. Just just keep mm -hmm. it clean, and I will accept all comments, good and bad, just not all language. All right. Do you have? Yeah, oh, here we go. Okay, um, go ahead. Yeah. One of the one of the comments there about the OS ten remark is. Uh, Wonderwall135 says, ah, the poor man's OS 10. And then somebody <laughs> replied, it's better. And then uh, he replies, uh, then one of them, uh, and another person replies back to Wonderwall saying, check out money bags. Uh, I'm not sure what he was trying to say there. But, uh, and then, uh, then Kingfisher replies to Wonderwall as well. I prefer to think of it as the wise man's weapon of choice. <laughs> I like to collect those pieces of paper with numbers on them. Okay. Uh, I'm just I'm just scrolling down. It ran. Uh, Mr. Tu 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 and Ba Banshee means flute in Hindi language. Uh, I didn't know that. I'm I'm assuming he refers to the Banshee media player. But thank you, Mr. Tu Ni Ba. And, and I'm I'm hope I'm saying these names right. If I'm saying it wrong, I really do apologize. Uh, Interesting about the banshee comment because yeah. uh, the only the only uh, the only other time I had heard the word banshee was um, uh, was with the expression. I'm not sure if it's if it's an Australian expression or if you're squealing like a banshee, you're making a lot of high pitched noise. So that's yeah. that was just the only other time I'd heard that uh, that word. So I'm not yeah. Well, there we go. Well, I'm I'm enlightened now. I I think last year I I did just a random goofy video. I was, I was in one of those moods where I, I picked, well not picked apart, but just made fun of some Linux names. You know, and, and one of them was Banshee, and I thought Banshee, you know, which I guess uh, literally refer, refers to a ghost, like a female ghost, if I'm not, not mistaken. So I thought, well, I think the developer should change the Banshee media player to Ghost Vagina media player. I, I got a reply back. He says he was rolling on the floor laughing. He says, please, please, more like these. And I was like, well, I have to keep it somewhat half clean. But I just left it at that. So. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, wow. I mean, gosh, even though we've got 700, or at least I've got 700-odd comments to Pick off. It's kind of a bit. Yeah, hard I, uh, I have. Fun. Yeah, uh, no. If, if you find one, stop me. I have one from Man Manastein. Have it in my school blank and hate it. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm assuming because it doesn't work or nobody really knows how to use it. I'm not really sure. Comments like these, guys. If you don't mind expanding, let me know. You know, maybe we can help you out. So. Uh, one comment that was left on Linux Mint 11 review. What is this operating system? Is this edible? <laughs> uh, it's it's very uh, minty, as uh, as the new YouTuber Linux Battery. You know, uh, I saw one's video. This is very minty, so but it's it's not the kind of uh, thing you would want to eat. Uh, you know, I don't think you want to eat your computer, but I'll I'll just leave it at that. Oh, I'm just scrolling down myself. <laughs> yeah, for all you yeah, listeners out there, I, I meant what I said. We're, we're just picking these, at, picking these at random. So uh, hopefully you find them entertaining and possibly enlightening. And if you don't, please let us know either way. Uh, let's see. James Onyx says about Linux Mint 11, does the theme need to be green all the time? I don't really like it. Does it come in any other colors? <laughs> no, you're stuck with green and stop your whining. 
I'm just being kidding. Of course, you can change it to the way it, Linux is very customizable more than Windows. So if you don't like it, yes, you can change it, of course. Oh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is from Solar Gang Yula. This is my opinion. Ubuntu is for people who are more advanced on using computers. Windows is good for co consumers because you don't have to go through so much to add an application. And let's be honest, most people aren't advanced computer users. It, but yeah, I mean, I, I wrote that. I would have to agree, but that's not 100% accurate. For some Linux distributions, like, uh, oh, just top of my head, Arch, I probably would not recommend that for new users. Linux is a learning curve, but if you download something that's ready to go out of the box, like, uh, you know, uh, Linux Mint 11 or Zorin or, you know, or something like, or uh, uh, what, what's the other one? The, Ping guy, you know, I mean, like with all the software and codecs, you know, installed, it should be okay. But even that it's, you know, Windows isn't Linux and vice versa, but it is somewhat of a learning curve, yes. Yeah, true that. I mean, that's um, that's what a lot of people, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the kind of the in quotes newbie comments that they yes. all left uh, are, you know, ringing along the same line. So I think, yeah, it is a learning curve, but from you know from the all the hoops that you have to jump through when it comes to installing software and whatever on on windows and just general maintenance upkeep you know defragging um, you know virus scanning and all that kind of stuff yeah i think comparatively you've got a lot less to learn in linux you don't necessarily have to you know get down to the terminal anymore you don't have to be uh, you know, you don't have to be living in editing your .com files all the time. Right. It's it's gotten to the stage where, for most people, for the average user, it is going to be uh, it is going to be pretty easy to pick up. Yeah. For the power user, you've got infinite you've got infinite possibilities of uh, of you know customization and and what have you. So I mean, for the for the power user from Windows, they will have to learn a, quite a bit more if they want to get to the same level of power under right. Linux as they sure. were on Windows. But then again. If they're that much of a power user, um, you know, they would have had to learn all that stuff in the first place. So it's not yeah. going to be that hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, another comment uh, left on the Linux Mint 11 uh, review was, I use Mac, Windows, and Ubuntu 11.04 right now, and it's all great. I'm thinking, though, that, uh, that I might switch to Mint 12 when it comes out. I haven't used Mint since, uh, since 8, since version 8, in a live CD once. What's it like installing an application? Is it the same thing? Is there something the same as the software center? Also, to install an application you download, is it pretty much the same as Ubuntu? Blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I just said, yep, it, it works pretty much the exact same way that Ubuntu does. You can download and install apps through the software manager, which is the same type of thing as right. Ubuntu software center. Or you can download .deb files and double click to install right. it. Simple and elegant. Yeah, you know, so, so some people, some users just don't like change or are resistant to change. Um, I don't mind change as long as it's it just works out of the box. That's that's probably the most simplest answer I can give you. Uh, let's see. You're this is from X X Fakey U X. Um, you're using Ubuntu 11.4 with Unity. In that case, Windows 7 blank and rocks. Uh, I just smiled back, but. What can I say? I do think Windows 7 rocks, but I also think Ubuntu with Unity 11.04 at least also rocks. There you go. Oh, at least it boogies a bit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Another comment uh, that, and th these are the kind of comments that I really appreciate. Um, my friends who only use computers for web surfing, watching movies, emails, and other stuff all have viruses and slow laptops. I put this Linux Mint onto them, and they and they're happy, and they've never come back with a problem again. Make old laptops turn into uh, turn into new life. Open Office is more than good enough. Only thing is, I don't know how to connect iPod and iTunes for them, um, but I looked, and and I'm not so smart at this. It's a shame because me and my friends all use iPods. We like iPods. This is the only thing that Mint can't do for us. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, the first part of that comment is always exciting to to hear that uh, people who have been having problems with Windows, you know, are, are yeah. having you know, moderate amounts of success with uh, with Linux, but um, that is another good point though, because I do get a few comments about 
especially people that are very curious about using Linux. They're like, oh, well, you know, can I, can I do my everyday stuff on, uh, you know, on Linux that I do on Windows? Right. And I say, yes, you can. And then they like, uh, they list off, you know, the software that yeah, they yeah, use. Yeah, and I yeah. say, all of that's good. Uh, but iTunes is, is a bit of a, is a bit of a bummer. I mean, right. obviously you can, uh, like, I mean, I think Banshee and Rhythmbox and most music players, you can transfer music, uh, to iPods and stuff like that. I know I certainly can with mine. Um, but as far as the more complicated stuff, you still kind of need iTunes. Yeah. Yep. I mean, look, I. Uh... Going back to my previous comment, if I really, really have to use a Windows application, I'll just boot into Windows. But that's just my preference. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend that to everybody, but hey, use what works. Oh, let's see. WK Romer. Who the, who the hell calls it a mousy? I guess when I was doing the video, I just, I, I may have said, but let me see if my mousy works instead of mouse. So I replied, me see. That he replies, you you obviously have no idea what the hell you're doing, man. <laughs> I oh, just wow, start laughing nice. out loud. I what did I I get that sometimes. I'm still standing, installing, on and testing, and blah blah blah. I look, I understand. Sometimes I just like to be silly. <laughs> but I replied, BC. <laughs> but that, yeah, that made sure. a nice, uh, smart did impression. You, did you did you spell it in the way that's like plural of mice? You could say M I C E Meesey. Well, I wrote, what did I write? M-E-S-E-Y. Oh, okay. I should have moved your way. That would have made more sense. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got another comment here um, from uh, Freecracker HD uh, yeah. saying that it's funny because I live in Switzerland, we speak German, and you say LibreOffice in the Latin way, and we say it with the English normal I, smiley face. Ah. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Pronunciation there you mistakes go. or whatever again. Uh, uh, let's see. Jay Lazell one. This is from three months ago. This guy is a complete idiot. I didn't reply, but I resent that remark. You know, remark. I am sometimes an idiot, just not a complete idiot. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, I did write, uh, hail the Linux idiots, or some, maybe I should not have wrote that back, but hey, I was just having some fun, so. Uh, look, guys out there in YouTube land, if, if I say something that doesn't sound right, if I say it wrong, look, I'm not always right, nobody has let me know, you know, and if I say something stupid, tell me what I said, you know, maybe I can learn from you guys, I don't mind, I really don't. Uh, all right, here's another one, David Pollard, 71. I hate Windows. Get me out of here. Ah, uh, what superficial comparison crap. Ooh, I don't like the backgrounds. Get a life, loser. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, uh, I, I just wrote back, don't hate, you know. But <laughs> maybe I did write, I did say I don't like the background. Look, I was just making an observation, okay? Jeez. Anyway. Um. <laughs> Oh, let's see. No, if, if you haven't, just jump right. I'm just, we're probably going to wrap this up here in about 10 minutes or so anyway. So um. mm. I found another, uh, I will probably get blamed for this, but what is the learning curve for learning to use this after using Windows for so long? I'm try I'm thinking of trying it, but I'm a little nervous about it. And, uh, and I just responded, no worries. Linux Mint is the first OS that I ever tried. And the biggest learning curve was only the way you install applications through the software manager instead of downloading uh, you know, dot .exes. Right. Everything else is very simple. The Mint team have a great user guide that really helps you get well acquainted with the system and the way everything works. It's very, very similar to Windows, especially XP. And I personally found the learning curve very gentle. Hope that helps. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was a nice little, you know, comment there. What can I say? Uh, Ash, Ace T Light. Uh, your your two bias towards Windows, which is highly unfair, and Windows is not perfect. Well, I agree, Windows is not perfect. Honestly, Windows is trash. I don't agree with that. Microsoft just cares about the money, not the community. Ubuntu is also open source, so the community can actually put input what they want if they know how to code. I'm not trolling, just giving my opinion. Uh, no offense taken, I, I understand. I do agree that Microsoft or Windows is not perfect. I just don't agree that Windows is trash, but that's my opinion as a dual booter, so. Yeah, well, people are gonna uh, have their opinions about yeah. one thing or the next. Yeah. So they're uh, entitled to that. 
um, to Turbo Turbo Lord. I kind of like that Turbo Lord. I hate Unity so much. It's the most unproductive DE I've ever seen. It's even worse than GNOME 3. Um, I wrote, well, it works for me for now. I, I like Unity. I'm not quite ready for GNOME 3. Maybe with Linux Mint, the next one, what, 13 with the LTS, LTS I may be ready. But uh, do I think Unity might be better than GNOME 3? Right now, possibly, because from the beginning, for me, at least, it's proven to be more stable than GNOME 3. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, in my experience, um, you know, I've, I used, I was using GNOME 3 for quite a while, um, and, you know, I was getting along with it just fine. And, um, and I started testing uh, Ubuntu 11.10, um, but uh, it, was, it was a really, really buggy testing cycle, so I went back to GNOME 3 until a couple of weeks after the Ubuntu 11.10 release. And after that, I really appreciated Unity, um, and yeah. I'm still using it. So I yeah. mean, that's that's got to be saying something. I mean, actually, um, I'm using at the moment. I'm using Ping iOS, uh, which by default uses the GNOME shell, uh, that's very much customized. But I ended up I ended up um, just installing the Unity desktop on top of Ping iOS, and I'm using that. But with all the you know the pre-installed yeah. applications yeah. and tweaks that you get with Ping I. So I mean, for me, that works just. Yeah, exactly okay. how I'd want it to. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really enough said about that. But uh, Speaking of Pinga, I've, I've had multiple, you know, requests to try it out, but uh, that that OS there, that one's pretty loaded. Uh, huh? I'm, so I'm assuming it's not going to be as zippy as, quote, a normal Linux distribution since it is pretty loaded. It's probably something that you, you should probably want to run, say, with at least the one gigabyte of RAM. Is, is that a fair statement? Um, it, is, it, is an interesting, it, it is an interesting uh, point of view from that, you know, that's generally the way we tend to think of it. And I think if you give Ping iOS uh, room, it will take up a fair bit of RAM and stuff like that. But at the same time, I mean, I've, I've, um, I actually watched a review from Ping iOS about a year ago. Uh, one of the hosts, one of the hosts from that, was uh, he was saying that the, he was expecting the system to be slower because of the fact it has so much stuff pre-installed in it. Right. Um, but actually, it turned out that in his experience, it it performed just as well as the other one. So he thinks that was just a. A kind of a Windows mentality that it, that it sort of just uh, subconsciously crept into his bl- uh, crept into his brain. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's tough to say. In my experience, Ping Guy doesn't lag any more than than any other distribution, uh, which is not much at all. So I don't know. But then again, if you gave it, I've always had you know four gig, eight gig of RAM, you know, twenty right. to shoot yeah, around. Yeah. But um, I'm not sure how it would do with just a gig or whatever. Okay. He does, um, Ping Guy does do, um, like, I mean, the thing is, is that even though there's there's a number of programs that, you know, start uh, when you boot up the computer, you can, you know, just jump into startup applications, knock back some of the, um, knock back some of the startup apps, and it's really going to be as, as, uh, as, you know, snappy as the next system. Okay. So I, I find it works just, just perfectly for me. But um, yeah, I mean, I have heard that's been a concern of other people in the past that it is uh, bloated. But I think in the Linux world, you can install as much software and stuff as you like, and it isn't going to slow it down too much. Okay. Oh, let's see. Let's do a few more, then I guess we'll wrap it up here. Uh, Boliv, Bialov, Boliv518. I like your video, dude, but you make Windows users sound like Mac users. Uh, I didn't know re- what to reply, so I replied, oops. Uh, I'm not sure how to take that. How do you take it? Yeah, I don't know either. From my experience, Mac users are generally fairly um, devoted, I guess you could say. Yes. They, uh, I mean, one, they say that once you've bought one Apple product, you're always going to be buying Apple products, and I think that is true for a lot of people. Um, you know, there are a lot of Mac users out there I know who will swear by their Macs, and they will, you know, they're saying, "Oh, I'm not going to buy anything else because it just works." And I think okay. for those who, you know, for those who have the money to support that kind of, uh, you know, venture, then, you know, power to them. But um, you know, for the rest of us, um, you know, it's just all about finding something that works for you and, uh, you know, something that doesn't inconvenience you more than uh, makes you productive. So yeah. 
Uh, uh, I've got a comment here yeah, talking about um, uh, on my In Galactic's opinion video about 200 million Ubuntu users, and uh, and I'd been talking about you know how Ubuntu would be had been uh, getting quite widespread, and uh, and a particular guy here, let's see, uh, Zhu Ling Yu, I'm not sure, must be Asian. Uh, but uh, fail, uh, his comment is, fail is expected in Linux desktop business. In fact, fail is expected in all businesses. Uh, for example, Windows Phone, Zoom, Vista, and Apple before it took off. I'm optimistic about Canonical. Ubuntu communities will make a hit someday. Just give them time. And I think, um, you know, that's a fairly healthy perspective on it. A lot of people that were kind of bagging uh, Canonical for the moves that they were making, yeah. and, you know, making up their own desktop environment and all that kind of thing. But I think really for the team that they have and for the, you know, for the, for the stuff that they've done for the Linux world, um, you know, you've really got to give a lot of respect to, to Canonical and the Ubuntu team. And I think really, you know, they're getting they, their minds in the right place. And, um, you know, it, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Ubuntu in the next five years even. Because uh, I think, you know, give them, give them time and I definitely think they're going to be onto something huge. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where it all goes, but I definitely agree with the commenter saying that uh, you know the Ubuntu communities will make a hit one day. Just give them time. Yeah, they are really uh, the community. They are really, really trying hard to to try to uh, you know convince you know uh, at least some Windows users to just switch over completely. Well, I'm not ready to switch over, but I've been perfectly happy dual booting. Um, you know, we talked briefly about a desktop uh, Linux, and, and uh, you know, it, you know, what would it take for a, a, a true mass market desktop Linux? And I was thinking, well, what if Google, you know, with their Android operating system, which has proven itself, why don't they make a Google PC with Android, which is based off Linux, right, and had just Android pre-installed, like with all the drivers ready to go? I mean, wouldn't that work? And I'm thinking it probably could. Yeah, I think um, a lot of the the kind of the you know bridge devices that aren't quite like I mean they are tablets, but you can plug them into you know you can dock them into a keyboard you know like the ASUS um, transformer and things like yeah. that. Um, those little almost netbook devices, um, you know, they are running Android as as uh, as the default system, obviously. So yes. I think it's very very possible that Android is going to be you know, or it already is a major player in the operating system market, full stop. But I think even in uh, you know with the way that the, the that the industry seems to be going now with Windows 8 looking so much you know more like a smartphone operating system. Right. Uh, OS 10 is is taking cues from iOS and they're starting to integrate. Um, you know things a lot more, and it, it it appears at least at this stage that give us another ten years, and you know both Windows OS ten uh, and probably Android and Ubuntu as well are all going to have one system for every device, right. be it PC, tablet, or smartphone. So you know it, it it's interesting. Yeah, I th I think that's the goal. If if I read the developer release for Windows 8, I believe that's the goal of Microsoft to have one Windows 8 across all platforms. And it, I mean, it, if if they can make it work that way, way I mean, talk about you know keeping it simple. Wow. But I believe it when I see it. But we'll you know we'll see what happens. There's there's supposed to be a Windows 8 uh, beta released at the end of February, if I'm not mistaken. I'm curious to try that out. All right, let me, let's me let each read a, f a few more, then I guess we'll wrap it up. It's been about an hour or so. Um, this is B, B Ball God 237. I literally threw up in my mouth when he said Windows 7 is perfect. My reply, well, I'm glad you agree. Uh, and then Wong Z1986 replied to B Ball God, what's wrong with Windows 7? I've used it so far without any major problems. Uh, Taco Eating Ninja, I love that, replied, it's annoying and slow and is barely compatible with anything. Uh, now I work for a tech company, that's my opinion, but if you use it for your own use, then never mind. Uh, it's barely compatible with anything. Really? I thought it would be one of the most compatible OSs out there, but I don't know. That's how I see it anyway. Uh, well, you never know. As far as companies are concerned, um, I did some work experience for a uh, for a TV station, and that was uh, back in 2009, I think. 
and um, they were all still most of them were uh, were still running uh, XP and Windows Windows 7 had come out uh, it was right at the end of the year and um, and they didn't have any plans to upgrade and they uh, and one of the guys who I was working with said yeah well we only just finished upgrading to Windows XP before that we were all running Windows 2000 and um, so the, in the corporate world software and uh, and computing uh, like the computer software that they use yeah. uh, can be running on a very slow basis it okay. um, they don't rev it very often and so what can happen is when a new operating system like Windows 7 comes along and people from the, you know the outside try and use the software that they use at work on their uh, computers it can be that the software is so old that it just does not work okay. the way it's supposed to in modern systems okay. I don't know but that's um, I mean for most you know personal consumer users uh, that really is not an issue but I think in the corporate world it, it can be a bit of a speed okay. bump sometimes fair enough statement you want to do a few more then we'll wrap it up um, yeah, one uh, one comment that I've uh, that I've got here about things that uh, I don't like about Ubuntu, and this is from uh, Lynn five four five. Uh, things that I don't like about Ubuntu: over marketing, limitations of package manager, hard to modify and maintain mod in sync. Not really sure what that is. Resulting in a broad spread of respins multiplied by not best software choices slash decisions, and also fact that it becomes the uh, the Something of uh, the free and open source world making others surrender to this fact efficiently. Like, I'm not really sure. I didn't really get that comment, but talks too much and does too little. Uh, I see Gen 2 heritage as a good basis for a top of the line OS. Gen 2 methods are uh, broken, though. Hmm. So I'm not really sure what. I mean, I can understand the first couple, but uh, right. I'm not really sure the, the final point of that apart from. Obviously, mm. this particular commenter appreciates Gentoo. Yeah. Um, as far as Ubuntu is concerned, over marketing, not really. I mean, they don't they don't have a huge marketing budget, um, as far as I can tell. I mean, apart from an online presence, which is quite big, you don't really see a whole lot of um, you know Ubuntu advertisements elsewhere, um, or you know anywhere else really uh, beyond beyond the internet and YouTube. In fact. I think it's YouTubers like us that are probably the, you know, one of their biggest advertisements. Yeah, I would have to agree there. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've never seen a Ubuntu commercial here on TV in the states. I, I, I think it would be great to have a, you know, a spokesperson, the voice of Ubuntu, and I would be happy to do it. Now, nah, I'm just kidding, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as marketing, it's 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 the internet and people like us, you know, calling it as we see it. But uh, on on a mass scale, I don't see it here in the states, at least. What about in Australia? Yeah, no, I haven't I haven't really seen much at all. Okay. Um, pretty much the most. I mean, um, we do have like a sort of a, a Linux a Linux conference here that um, usually. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. There there is a fair bit of um, you know Ubuntu kind of paraphernalia about. But okay. um, apart from that, you don't really see it much in the public. It is a lot in like a lot of schools. Um, a lot of schools run uh, Ubuntu on on all of their um, desktops, which is which is actually pretty good to see. Okay. Um, in that, yeah, they just use it because it's easier to maintain and it's cheaper. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, you don't really you don't really see much. Okay. Uh, you want to do one more, then we'll wrap it up. Um. Okay, we'll do one one kind of humorous uh, comment here. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, uh, so Anne Anne Zaxon is his, is this particular person's name. It says hi. Generally, I have appreciated most of your vid videos and thank you very much for your efforts. This time, however, my patience has reached its limit. Do you assume that all of your viewers have English as their first language? I don't understand why you have to speak so fast and as a consequence, inarticulate, as if you're being chased by hoodlums. Most of most of what you said in this clip was is totally uncomprehensible. I hope you can slow down and let us understand. Thank you and take care. Uh, I couldn't understand a word you said. Slow down. Not. I'm. I'm just kidding. Which video was it? <laughs> uh, I think it was um, the. Yeah, it was an Ingalactics opinion from uh, uh, from I think October where I was talking about um, oh. plans. And uh, I think I think they definitely have a point for for uh, for English as a second language um, yeah, viewers. Yeah. 
it's yeah. probably not the easiest because I do generally just as kind of like a fun and right. sort of to keep it very dynamic, I generally right. Right. start talking quite quickly. Okay. Uh, in the rest of my videos, I ge like I, I don't try to be um, talking that much, uh, like talking that fast. Um, I mean, here at the college that I'm at, we have a lot of, of people who have English as a second language. Okay. So I am actually very used to talking very slowly and, you know, articulating clearly but it is a good point um in that in that particular video i probably was speaking incredibly fast so <laughs> uh yeah i i have to look back but if i remember the video it's you did speak i mean i had no problem personally but a person like that last commentator i see their point because you try to cram in as much information as you can in that a lot of time that you give my that you give yourself when when I when I do the Toss Today news, uh, you know, screencast, I, you know, I'll pick out, I'll have maybe a list of ten news items, but really, if I want to keep it, you know, somewhat short and precise, I can't do all ten because then I'll start blah 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 blah. You know, I have to I have to slow down. So maybe I'll pick three or four of what I think are the top news items for that week and just you know talk that way. But of course, I did have a commentator a while back. Um, he says, uh, I think we talked about, he says, I, I dare you to do a video and talk faster. And my reply was, well, I, I can't because I would need more RAM. But um, uh, I remember that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I forget who, if you remember who you are, please let me know. Because uh, that was one of the coolest comments. I, and I, you know, it's, it's, it's just that I was trained back in college and speak, you know, speak, you know, speak clearly and precise, pretty, not precisely. Maybe I do. Maybe I did tend to speak a little bit slow, but I try to try to pace it a little bit better. But uh, yeah, but definitely. It, as far yeah. as that comment was concerned, it was totally, you know, totally called for, and it's that kind of feedback yes. which uh, which really helps, you know, which really helps me as as somebody who's trying trying to communicate something, uh, especially for all of those who don't have English as as their first language. And I think that actually does account for quite a large uh, demographic of the people that that, that watch these videos. So uh, definitely um, shout out to you, the, the uh, commenter. And um, yeah, so thank you for the feedback. And it's definitely something that I believe I, I think in the next Ingalactic's opinion uh, where I reviewed my tablet, I, I did try and make a point of not talking as fast. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but definitely called for. And, uh, but I think, it was, uh, I think it was a kind of humorous expression. Sure, totally understandable and, you know, Trust me, you out there, we both understand completely. You know, sometimes trying to get the pacing right is an art form in itself. So there you go. But uh, we totally understand. Well, it's been about an hour or more, so I think we'll wrap it up. Uh, but yes, uh, to all of you out there, uh, thanks again, once again, for listening to both of us. We enjoy doing this. It, it was a lot of fun. We had a few laughs. Uh, I know sometimes one of the two podcasts, you know, in the past, somebody made a comment, a lot of good information, but it seemed a bit dry and mundane. Uh, yeah, you know, we try to keep them as dynamic and as, you know, as lively as possible. But really, in, you know, in some of the toss cats, uh, you know, we're not, you know, we're just giving you factual information. We're not trying to be funny or, you know. It's not exactly the life of the party, I'm sure, but yeah, still, yeah. you know. No, I mean, I understood the comment, and we'll, we will try to mix it up in the future. There's nothing wrong with humor, you know, just as long as it somehow fits in with the topic like this, you know, trashing all of your comments. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, yeah, this, is, uh, this has been a very fun uh, podcast on a uh, special edition, I guess, of Comments Corner. This is something I started a few months ago on a whim, and it seems to be working okay. So, again, thank you for suggesting it. If you would like us to continue with these type of comments corner, we have who knows how many thousands we have both of us combined. All we ask is that you keep the uh, you know language uh, you know down in terms of its content. No vo no vulgar language, as it will be automatically deleted from both of us. I'm sure. But once again, this is Total West today from the United States. Thank you for listening, and from my good friend Ig. Yeah, well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, as it were. And uh, once again, we appreciate your comments, and, uh, and it really is an exciting 
uh, sort of journey for us as YouTubers, and it is something that is uh, quite special that you really don't get uh, from from uh, many other uh, forms of media. So uh, keep them coming. Uh, Feel free to drop either of us a line, either in the comments or you can follow me on Twitter. You can drop by um, Total OS Today's uh, blog or his website. And, uh, you know, feel, uh, feel free to leave whatever kind of response you want to in, in whatever place is convenient. And, uh, and we're going to have some interesting things, I'm sure, in the future for you guys to listen to. Hopefully, most of it will be informing and you might even get something that's entertaining. So you never know. Yeah, just one very brief last comment. I usually end these videos with something like, and I'll catch you guys some, you know, catch you guys sometime in the future. And of course, uh, one commentator uh, wrote, uh, I like the way you end your videos. Of course, you really couldn't catch someone in the past. And I wanted to say, well, not yet, not with the current technology. But uh, yeah, that, that little you know, phrase in the future, I think started with one of the Zorn OSs uh, where I, I wrote uh, Zorn OS, a Linux for the future or something like that. And then the phrase in the future just kind of stuck, stuck with me. So I enjoy saying them and, and I hope you enjoy listening, I guess. But on, on that note, we both thank you from Australia and the United States, from IG and TOS Today. And as always, we will catch you guys sometime in the future. Ciao.